Welcome to What's the 4 and one your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. I'm Monika McLean. Yes, so let's get started with some quick takes. So The Daily Show with Trevor Noah just added a new member to its news team. Comedy Central just announced that British comedian Gina Yashere has joined the show as a contributor, or as she put it, British correspondent. <laughs> so Yashere has been a stand-up comedian and television star in the UK for several years now appearing on iconic British TV shows such as Live at the Apollo, not the Apollo, but Live at the Apollo there, um, Mock the Week. And Yashere broke into the American comedy scene when she made it to the top 10 on Last Comic Standing. So, you know, that's a big deal. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. and since then, she has made the U.S. her home. Plus, she's the only British comedian to ever appear on Deaf Comedy Jam. So, she's doing things. She's black lady? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. She's from Nigerian um, heritage, so oh, yeah, nice, she's a black nice. lady. Okay. Black girl mm. magic across yeah. the pond, black yes. Black joy. <laughs> girl, I also heard that black boy joy. I was like, oh, that's so sweet. Oh. Okay, another black boy with some good old, good old joy, right? Mm -hmm. Jay-Z. Yes. He's launching a new company. It's called Arrive. Nice. And so what he's going to do is he's going to... Uh, um, fund startups and offer branding support for uh, startup businesses. Nice. So good for him, right, mm -hmm. Jay-Z? Okay. Go, and, and other black boy joy, black girl magic news, BET Networks and AEG announced that they have their first wave of star-studded um, events for the uh, LA Live, the BET Experience. Nice. You, you? Yes, I have. So this is their fifth annual time doing this. So it's going to be at the Staples Center and mm -hmm. it's going to be... Um, Presented by Coca Cola. Nice. Um, star Stud lineup. Mm. Schoolboy Q. Ooh. Do you, you follow? Yeah, you know I know Schoolboy Q. Okay. ASAP yeah, yeah. Rocky. Uh -huh. Bryson Tiller. What do you think of Bryson Tiller? I don't know, I don't know him mm. too much. No. I don't follow him too much. Okay. Wiz Khalifa, Meeks, yes. Migos, yes. and um, Keisha Cole. Right? And uh, many, many more. So it's going to yes, be... Yes, Ray Schremer, the whole nine. Right, everybody. so it's going to be a four-day event. It will run from June 22nd to the 25th. Um, like I said, again, at the Staples Center. And... Um, if you want the performance breakdown, you can see it on our website at www.whatsthe411.com. Welcome back to What's the 4 and 1, where we're bringing you stories that are popping in. You know Snoop Dogg, right? Who? Oh, nah. Listen. <laughs> so, Snoop Dogg released a mock assassination video called Bad, Bad, Not Good about Trump. And Trump being Trump responded via Twitter. And he said, quote, can you imagine what the outcry would be if Snoop Dogg, failing career and, and all, had aimed and fired the gun at President Obama? Jail time, okay. close quote. Next, Bow Wow jumped into the fray and threatened to pimp out Melania Trump in defense of Uncle Snoop. And then T.I. posted on Instagram. See, I can't even say all of it because there's so many curses in it, so I'm just going to, you know, Wait, can I paraphrase. Wait, can I for one second? Yes, go ahead. I really don't believe that Donald Trump tweets himself. I think he I, like has like a little Mexican somewhere. Like, <laughs> that would because, be so funny. Because it just he's just too on it. You are the president. You just sit in that, there and you could tweet. That's like, who he is. That's who he is. That's okay, who he so is. What is so, so he's in a meeting. And he's twit he's tweeting Snoop Dogg. He's watching TV. That's what he does. If you've read these like political, I've read it. He's just watching TV. But he's he's not, watching he's... TV and he's tweeting as he's watching TV and just doing that. And that's and that's his. Do you think that he's really doing those yes, tweets? Yes, I think do. That, that man is sitting there tweeting. I I do. I yes, know. I do. I, I think he's think. there tweeting, and I think that his the people who are around him, the people in his administration, are mortified because they want him to stop tweeting, but he won't. So. He tweeted that, right? Failing career. Remember Snoop Dogg. We're talking about Snoop Dogg, right? Like multi-million dollar the one that artist. Just, just had a, yeah. a new deal with uh, Mar Martha Stewart. Yes. Oh, okay. The failing career. But okay, so T.I. posted blah, beep, 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 beep. Okay, lace front possum for wig wearing, alternative fact, atomic dog. Beep, beep, beep. Diarrhea okay. face. Okay. Ass man. Okay. So that's what leave he said. Your, wait, let so me he read. said, leave our legends names out show. Beep, 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 M and F in mouth. <laughs> and continue to what focus on dividing minorities, building barriers, alienating immigrants, and messing up. That's not what the word he said, but messing up this country like you've been doing. Hashtag you want to be dictator. Hashtag presidential level. F boy? Yeah. The president is an F-boy? So, he said it. 
He but said so, it. Oh, but wait, T.I. Wait, is getting divorced from Tiny, right? Maybe he's yeah. just mad. Because that's no, a lie. No, no, no. He's he, not getting divorced anymore? Because, he, wait, he, is he I, getting divorced? I, the last I heard, they were getting a divorce. So I read that they were not getting divorced. So I'm thinking that maybe he did this when they were still having, like, on the out. Uh, no, I don't know, because no, this is a lot of emotion in here. But T.I. But has been going in for a while. He's been going in for a while about a lot of different things. Like, like I believe when... Who was it? Little Wayne came out and said something crazy, and then T.I. was like, listen, you're my brother, but you sound crazy out here. So You know what I mean? So he's been checking people in his way. He's, he's woke. He's woke. He's trying to be... Um, he's woke. He's trying to be... He clip, clip Huxtable is what he's trying to do. What? He's, <laughs> like, like with that whole family hustle, that's what he was trying to do at first. Oh, uh, so, okay. So maybe he's trying to like position himself. I don't know. I think he just, I think he just really doesn't like Donald Trump. But they're going to come from his edges. He better stop. But I don't think he cares, though. I think he just feels like he needs to, like, speak out. So, now, further to what you're saying, basically, Steve Harvey chimed in. So, you remember how Steve Harvey met with Donald Trump, like, mm-hmm. during the transition? And Kanye. Yeezy. Listen. So, people don't seem to like that. Because now they're throwing the whole house Negro, you know. Steven. Yes, Steve we Harvey. Sick. Is we um, sick, boss? I don't think that way, though. No. But maybe I'm a capitalist. People say that all the time about me. Well, I'm an institutionalized slave. I'm coming <laughs> in. Well, me. listen, you, are you in a sunken place, girl? Don't go to the sunken place. Have you seen Get Out? You know I've seen Get Out. Okay, yes. well, the, okay, well don't be in the sunken somebody, place. He, I got to wake up. <laughs> Get, millennial, she woke. Get up. I'm going to stay asleep. Fuck that shit. Go oh, my God. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, Steve Harvey. Listen, so okay, so you would agree with what he said because basically he was like, "Look, this is what he said on his radio show. The problem with all of this is that there is an office in this country called the president, and you have to respect the office. You really do, whether you want to or not. You have to respect the office. They got laws. I love Snoop. Bow wow, always respectful and cordial with one another. Me and Ti, I don't have no problem with Ti. I love the dude." I'm just saying, brothers, be smart. You got to be smart, man. All y'all talking, got money. You got money, man. You got money, and they know how to go after that money. Just be smart. Let me tell you, man, leave the first lady out of this. Y'all getting down another path with these cats now. Mm -hmm. You start messing with their wives. I tell y'all, y'all going down another path. So he sound like people, an old country slave. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Shut up, Steve Harvey. You're like a goddamn fool. No. <laughs> See? You're going down another path. Talk about his wife. <laughs> no, it's... Okay, I'm not going to say anything. Listen, no, but say say what you got to say, bro. Say what I got to say? Yes. All right, me, Onika McLean. Yes. Say what I got to say. Yes. Okay, I think that there's some validity to what Steve Harvey is saying because all of a sudden the tax man be knocking on your door, going door. And let me tell you something, homie, it may not be pretty. It's not like T.I. and Snoop Dogg are not like have some affiliations with some people that's in them streets doing some things, right? Okay. All they have to do is track it back, right? I, I get that. And mm-hmm. they need to get that too. Listen, I get, okay. I mean, you're, you're just you're, tweeting. You're, what are you doing? So do something. So start an organization. Help, you know, defund whatever it is that Trump got going on. You got some money, help to community I think they should more. do that too, but I don't feel like they should not, they should have to censor themselves because, oh, I got to be scared of my money. If everybody who was an artist was scared to speak out because they were going to lose money. A lot or, of them are. You know what I mean? Then you wouldn't have anybody speaking out. So to me, I'm like, no. Um, Steve Harvey but allowed himself the president to be... a fuck boy no, no, no. is a lot. L- listen, I think in an ideal world, obviously you want to respect the office. You want to respect the person who inhabits that office. But you've got a man in office who called Mexicans rapists, who said, you oh, know we what, know, we grabbing know. Look, women look, by the P word. Look, look, look. You know what I mean? Like, she done look. made this on the carpet. This <laughs> is not even on the carpet. I'm always gonna if you be, talk I'm about Trump, <laughs> yo, no, how, the hands on the back of her I neck. I am always going to do that. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Listen, yeah, listen. They and are. people at home, they know what I'm talking about. They feel the same way. Listen, you cannot do that. You can't be disrespectful to people you can't punch down as they say right when you punch down you pick on people who have less power than you right and then expect them not to punch back so i'm not saying that this was right what they said but they're artists they have freedom of expression donald trump has made his views very much known he has said a lot of things that people would consider disrespectful and so when you give it you got to be willing to, to get it back a and b remember when he said oh you know if they had if they had fired a gun at president obama it would have been jail time Remember Ted Nugent, that rock and roll star, mm-hmm. who was in a lot of ads for Donald Trump during the presidential com- campaign? He did say he would shoot President Barack Obama. 
and his wife when in they, a concert in 2007. Well, they came where from was Barack the outrage? Obama when they were like had him like looking like it's, a monkey. Like you, they, exactly. you're gonna come for the president, especially exactly. the first year. Everyone is is you know the gloves are off. It is what it is. But you have to know that Steve Harvey is only saying that because in his older wiser perception of himself he's trying to look out for those younger cats I, I mean, not Snoop Dogg because Snoop Dogg is just as old as Steve Harper <laughs> no, yeah, 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 yeah. yes the hell he is so it's like but no I just I, I feel like again you have been doing this you've been putting this out there Ted Nugent one of your your surrogates was out there he insulted President Barack Obama and there was no outrage and what did President Barack Obama go on well there was no Twitter was it was in existence then, but he didn't come back and say Ted Nugent, I hate you, this, that, and the third. But that's just not his that. style, so he's not going to. Because do that he's like presidential, that. and there's supposed to be a way that you're supposed to act as president. Hashtag white privilege. Listen, ooh, ooh you sounding woke now, amigo. Okay, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I know the privilege, but the privilege is in our minds, actually. You, Tyrese Gibson, I love his smile. That and it, see, the energy is going to stay right here, though. I know where you're going with this. No, I said going. I love his smile. I'm just trying to woo her. You all right, boo boo? Is the, the, the hairs going? I'm, 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 I'm gonna survive. I'm gonna okay. try. Okay. So this is the relationship corner, right? And we're talking about our, about our brother Tyrese Gibson, who just touched off a firestorm, right? So mm -hmm. he is Tyrese. He took to Instagram blasting women with weaves. <clears throat> okay. Fake eyelashes. Mm-hmm. Boobs and butts that are not real. Mm -hmm. Far too manufactured is what he said. We are manufactured hits the reason, clowns. Excuse me. <laughs> manufactured clowns hits the reason why you bitches are lonely. No, he didn't say that. He just said hits the reason why too many of you are single. Right. Okay, so do you think that Tyrese has a point? I'm scared to say <laughs> the point the words out my mouth. Listen, I hate how you know, listen. He wrote that book, what, Manology? Yeah, what have you yeah. supposed to be giving all these women all this advice and stuff? And this is the best you could do as a black man. Come for your black women and try to police what they wear and do. That makes no sense. That's not uplifting black women. That's not coming out of a place of concern. At least it doesn't sound like that for me. It sounds like you're trying to shame them. And I mean, as a person who just got married to someone of mixed race, like, you know what I mean? It just puts it in a very, he puts him in an awkward position. So I really do not agree Have with Have you this ever all. watched, like, his Facebook uh, videos where he's sitting in his car just talking, like... No, what does he say? He's really, <laughs> like, he's he's depressed. I feel like he has bipolar or something. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I just, when I when I listen to Tyrese, I, just, I get it. He goes and he has rants. And I, I see people do that. It's it's true. We we have this self image that society has put on us mm -hmm. that we have to be um, manufactured. Period. Right. And who is society? Us. Mm -hmm. Right. We say that it's yes. Right. We say that it's no. And it's true. I feel the same way. He is. Uh, a, he's one of our men, and we are ridiculed a lot by our men but we we kind of do the same thing back to them we but you know we do the same thing to each other like women will look at other women oh look at that fake booty where's she going with that fake butt or look at that weave that weave is crooked you know what i mean we do the sure. same thing to each other too but so, so, so like, is it that can but can you not have an opinion you can have an opinion but i think to blame women for why they're single because of how they look is ridiculous there's a lot of men out there who that love, love that yeah. love the big booty they don't care if it's fake they don't care if it's cement i don't concrete. care if it's from they your, just like what it. they say i don't care if your <laughs> weave is from your ear to your sleeve right <laughs> right exactly <laughs> they don't care right, they don't and you care. know what i mean and some people don't even some men they say they like a natural look but then they don't even know what natural is. I remember I was reading Cosmo. This was a couple years ago. And Cosmo did this little, like, test between men. They showed a woman without any makeup, woman with some makeup, and a woman with a full face. And they asked the men, okay, which one do you prefer? And, like, over and over again, they picked the woman in the middle with some makeup on and said, oh, that's beautiful. So it's like, wait a minute. Was all the women, right, so then you have to think about the test. Mm. Were all the women smiling? Because that's what they do sometimes, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, all things remaining equal. It was okay. just like one with no makeup, one with some makeup, and one with full face. And they liked the one when you done up a little bit. So it really just depends on the man. A lot of men don't even know what, what natural they is. Because, you know, know, they're so used to. Remember, what did, um, didn't um, Courtney say how, like, the women go to bed with the wig on? You know what I mean? So you can just like keep 
the illusion going or whatever. Not so. me. I go to sleep with a scarf on. Well, yeah. But see, my good good is good good, so. <laughs> Listen. Oh, Lord. Wait, where's the next story? What's going on? <laughs> so I can do stuff that, you know, other women can't. Listen. Okay, so going from a brother in the sunken place. Now that the sunken place is your new thing. <laughs> that is just, that is a new thing because yeah, you just Ooh. went there. You went there, Tyree, <laughs> and now on to oh man, mm. former president Barack Obama. Uh, recently, uh, he caused a stir while visiting New York City after his vacation on Richard Branson's island. Remember the the pictures yeah. where he was like holding on to the something, and he and was Michelle like, had on like coochie cut. I was like, I know she like, thank you, Jesus, like, take off them goddamn dresses. <laughs> crazy um he looks so good right people started calling him mr gq they started calling him bay and his refinery 29 reporter called him globama globama i love it you like that i love it i Sound love like flow joe to me i don't like that <laughs> i like globama because he was glowing mm. so do you think president obama could start like a fashion trend i like think in- that president obama and michelle obama have uh, the Oprah effect at this point. Okay. And whatever they do, people are going to follow them. So yeah. every, so all men say, I'm looking for my Michelle. Mm, I'm looking yeah. for my Michelle. Like, they that like is goals, a relationship goals. Right, yes. that is a thing. Mm-hmm. And I don't think because he left the office or they left the office that right. that is going to change because it's just so authentic. Like right. that love, that visualization of what love is, it's mm-hmm. going to remain. So whatever right. they do, I just hope they don't break up. You know what I'm trying to yeah, say? Just no. don't break up. Just stay together and just grow old. I don't think they. I don't think they. I don't break think up they are. Point. I don't. I don't think they are either. But I'm saying that people are going to watch them so closely because we haven't had that image before, mm-hmm. especially people of color, not just our, us. And a, and a really young couple too. Remember, they mm-hmm. came in the office and they the were millennials in their forties. Yeah, so they were just younger them. people. You mm-hmm. know, non-white male old. Right, everyone else, which is everybody else, right? All, look to them like, wow, it, it's amazing. And I, I just, I'm happy that they're happy. I know they're like, thank you, God, it's over. Right, and people just want him back so badly. Like, you know, people like mob him outside of the, the, the restaurant. Like, he was like a celebrity. But he is That's, a celebrity. Well, yeah. And like, he's a rich celebrity, all them damn book deals and stuff. Oh, yeah. Got. So, yeah. Dollars, yeah, they, I mean, they, I know, like, I know she was like, boy, that was a good idea. Me <laughs> getting with you. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Little African boy, that was a good idea. <laughs> All right, guys, keep it locked. We're going to come back with more of What's Poppin'. Stay tuned. The hashtag box office is so black. That's good. I don't know. Oscar's like, I'm sick of these more. I'm sick of these Negroes. <laughs> Wait a minute. So, Get Out mm-hmm. has grossed over $117 million. Today, wow. yes. Wow. So Jordan Peele has become the first black writer director to make over a hundred million dollars in his amazing. box office debut. That is amazing. That I is know amazing. he is like what is in amazing. the world. It only he it only took him four million dollars to make this movie. Mm-hmm. He used nobody knew any of the actors like, and so he had like one. Um, comedian that yes. was like that was kind of well known, mm-hmm. but he didn't spend any money. He spent all his money probably on. Um, Adversities. Adversities. Yeah, yeah. Adversities. Okay. So, have you seen the movie? Oh, yes, I did see the movie. Because mm-hmm. I've already referenced Sunken Place, Steve Harvey. I see you. So, now, you okay, see? so I, I already, yes. So, so <laughs> I saw the movie and uh-huh. I thought it was amazingly uh, crafty. Okay. Because I okay. hate scary movies. Okay. Right? You, I remember so, you saying that. So I was like, I'm not, I, I grew up in the projects. I was scared enough. I'm good. <laughs> I'm not going to sit and pay nobody $20 to really? scare the shit out of me. I, I love horror movies, movies, though. I love horror movies. Did so you I grow was, up in I the was, projects? No. That's probably but why. That's, that, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's probably why. Okay. Good. No, I loved Get Out because I wasn't sure if it was going to be scary or funny because, you know, yeah, I mean, this is horror. Yeah, but you know, Jordan Peele is a comedian, and I knew him from Key and Peele. So I was like, is it going to be kind of like this funny horror? Because there's those oh. two, and it was really creepy. Oh, you but don't know comedians? Because they are creepy. Well, yeah, I mean, they and can be sad too. and sad. Oh, you know, they can definitely be sad. <laughs> right. For, no joke, they can definitely be sad. But mm. I just love the way that they looked at race relations in this really, like you said, crafty way. It's not just over your head, it's like the liberals. 
the people that you think are okay, who are like, you know, embracing you in open arms, and they're the ones who are killing you. Like, I just thought that was so, so interesting. I loved it. Yeah, the the microaggressions, right? That's what's yeah, yeah. It was like real. It was like a, a um, a auction block. Yeah. Right. And I was like, wait a minute. So yeah. I, I went to see it, right? Yeah. And I sat there mm-hmm. when the credits were rolling, and I was like, wait. So that's why she said that. So that's right? why she said that. It, you had to wait. You had to wait, and you were like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So that's what grandma, who's gra- it was excellent. It was, it was. There were a lot of hidden messages in the movie. Like there's a point where he's like picking cotton mm-hmm. out, yeah, it, out of the chair. Yes, picking yes. cotton. But Think guess about what? what that but guess means. what it did? But guess what? what it but did? we're not gonna we gotta spoil it because people might not have seen it. People might not have seen it. But you, you gotta go to out. See it, you gotta get and out. That's what you guys need to, to do, it. right? You need to get out and see it, and don't freaking fire stick it don't don't <laughs> like go give that boy that money like i don't right. get that come on people and what you need to really do is go on our facebook page and talk about it because this clip is going to be there mm-hmm. yes. and talk about it and we can have an open dialogue about it because i thought it was at it was it was really good but do you think now that this has come out you've seen 118 17 million dollars already mm-hmm. do you think this is going to like encourage hollywood to make more movies like this or make more black oriented movies or well, he got a hundred million people. dollars. Can he start making some himself? Does he need? That's true too. Does I mean, he you need, can do does that. He, does you he can need do that. Hollywood? You know what I'm trying to say? Like Tyler Perry doesn't need Hollywood. Jaden and Will, Jada and Will, they don't need right. Hollywood. Like there's a there's a point right. where you you can't we can't say it can't be a situation. Someone said this to me in the social. Okay, movie. my daughter's a rapper, right? So this uh, guy said, "Oh, she should get a deal. Now she should get a deal." And I was like, "Well, does she want a deal?" Mm-hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? Right, we have okay. to change that mindset. Get out. You in a sunken place, Kizzy. I'm not in a sunken you, place. I'm a, <laughs> no, I'm a No, but wake up a little more. Yeah. But wake up a little more because why do we need to always go to somebody to get something? No, I'm not saying that we have to go to somebody to get something, but I do think that representation means something and is important. It is and important. And we, we do go out there and we support all these movies, whether there are black people in them or not. Uh-huh. So why not be able to Hollywood repay us? And make movies that also reflect our experience because that is the American experience. But does it, as well. but does it repay us? It, 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 it hires a couple black actors, but whoever is the whoever's the executive producers, they making the money. I just think that it's a situation no, where no, we no, get I, in and we make the money. Do your own thing. I believe that too. I definitely mm-hmm. believe that too. I definitely believe that we have to do our own thing and mm-hmm. have our own thing. Mm-hmm. But speaking of which, speaking of which. While we're on the topic of box office so black, uh, writer and poet Azini Ukoa, I hope I'm pronouncing her name right, um, has had an article on Medium and she suggested that if the incredibly talented artist and burgeoning actress Janelle Monet, who was with like in Hidden Figures, Beautiful. which also made a lot of money beating mm-hmm. out La La Land and Jason Bourne and Star Trek Beyond and X Men Apocalypse, mm-hmm. amazing. If Janelle Monet had strawberry blonde hair, and was white, she would have the world at her feet. She would be Hollywood's assigned ingenue. And what she was saying in that article was that this would mean that um, she'd have a well-deserved Oscar nomination, she'd have fruitful deals, she'd have magazine covers, and she'd have the validation that being a really talented actress, singer, would, would deserve. She's going to get it, though. So what happens is it takes us a little longer. But that girl is a dynamo. She is a dynamo. And, and people are going to bow down to her. She is everything. She is. Right? Whitney Houston. Kind of everything. You you get to a point. It just takes us a little longer. But, she, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I think that we, we focus on that um, so often that just making our own, I don't know, spotlights. I believe. Eventually, it's going to outshadow, right? Because, okay. Because because I was I was listening to. What was her What's her name? Oh my gosh, she she was in Twelve Years a Slave. Beautiful, Lupica? beautiful. Lupita, Lupita, Lupita. Nyong'o. Mm-hmm. What's going on with Lupita Nyong'o? Think about it. She she's acting, but she's but, on Broadway. You so, but you got to so remember, like, she was on Broadway. So she's 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 dedicated. But what class. about all she's of those doing amazing class. movies and all of those things that she would be having if she was Natalie Portman or you know some of these other people? But like how it do just you happens. say that? Like it's it, I think that there is definitely that ceiling there for black actresses. It's but more it's, difficult. But it's totally it's crashing more, now. It's like, more difficult. We have it this, is. this magic that everyone's like, women they could do a lot of stuff. It's coming. 
It's coming. Okay. Well, I, that's all I want you to know. So, if you, okay, you think it's coming. All right. I you're do. the optimist. I hope it's coming. I think it is. I'm a, in the sunken place. <laughs> We come just, on, we, we come just, on, rise, we just, rise. We just, rise. No, I just, I, I totally, no. I know that, that the, the privilege is there and I know that the access is there and the access is there even when the talent is not there, right? I see that and that, that drives you crazy, mm -hmm. but those are some, that's a talented woman and she's going to get her just due. And I right. think that she is. I think that she has and I think that she will continue. And right. I don't think, and I don't think that when you are preoccupied with, the privilege and what's going on, it doesn't it doesn't help. No, no, you have any. to you have to you follow have to just, your passion and do what you. You just have need to, to run your race. Day. You just yeah. have to run your race with blinders on because you're going to get there. Period. Right. I believe you're going to get there, but again, I don't think we should be leaving money on the table. Like you know, when you have those endorsements and and those branding and all of that stuff that's happening, you're making more money. And if we're just as talented, we you know we should. Be working to level that and playing some, field. And, and she may well. not take it. You know, some people they not at, not all money is good money. You know what I'm trying to say? Because mm -hmm. there's some th certain things that you got to do for certain things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You don't know what it is, right? Right. right. So now you're not going to put your name behind everything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That may be not know, everything because that will be error. But I'm saying you, there may be a, a a piece to it that we don't know. You know what I'm trying to say? It may not just be because she's black, she's not getting blah, blah, blah. It may be she's not taking all those things. Some and people just jump in and, and do a whole bunch of stuff and burn themselves out. She just seems like a really grounded woman. I remember seeing her talk about, remember when she was always wearing like black, black and white? And, white? Mm -hmm. and she was like, this is my uniform because, boo, because the heritage of my people and my father was a janitor and blah, 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 mm -hmm. and work as a uniform. And it just, she just seems so woke. Conscious. Transcendental. You know what I'm like trying to say? She just seems... Transcendent, yeah. Right. She just seems very not of this atmosphere. No, I like her a lot. I think she's very conscious. I like her a lot. I'm mm -hmm. just, you know... Again, we'll see. You're optimistic. She's just like an that. activist. Like, she gonna fight everybody. She's a millennial. You know they <laughs> fight in every battle. They're like, wait a minute, no. girl. <laughs> we can't wear red lipstick. Use a goddamn lie. <laughs> No, she's not gonna curse. So you don't, you, you cannot wear red lipstick. Hashtag such and such. Hashtag such and such. Hashtag such and such. And then she at Barack Obama and Michelle Obama. Have you, you added them yet? You, you see, you see. Look, I'm sorry. she got jokes. She got jokes. That's all right. Though. I love her though. She's Welcome back to What's the 4 and 1. Now we're bringing you stories that are in the pipeline. And Canva, a Brooklyn-based nonprofit organization, will celebrate its 40th anniversary with a Shona sculpture benefit sale. Mm, really nice. Well, the public will be able to purchase affordable, original Shona sculptures from Zimbabwe. The event will start with an opening reception on April 6th nice. and a public sale on April 7th through the 9th from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. at 19 Win Winthrop Street off of Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn. Proceeds from this event will support New York City children and families in need. Well, that will do it for this week's edition of What's the 4 and one your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. Until next week, check out our website, www.whatstheforeonone.com. Yes, and remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 4 and one TV. Please, check us out, and we might just mention you on our show. Yes, I'm Kizzy Cox, and on behalf of Anika McLean, thank you for watching What's the 4 and one We will see you next time. Who's got the 411? 411, they got the 411. Who's got the 411? We got the 411.